So this is our new wool padded jacket, a really technical piece, but parts of it origins back ten thousands of years. And a material that has been around for such a long time, of course, comes with some misconceptions. It does. And here's a few of them. It all depends on what type of wool you're using. It also depends on the thickness of the wool, the micron as it's measured in. So you can get everything down to 30 micron, which is a really fine micron, uh, and you won't feel any itchiness at all. But if you go up, up to 40 micron, then you would definitely feel it itching. But we don't use microns over 25 for garments, and if it's below 25, it's not itchy. Now for most of the people, it depends also how sensitive you are, mm. but normally we can say that below 25, most of the people don't feel itchiness, mm. uh, at least on a sweater like that. But as you also said, on base layers, we go even lower to make sure it's not itching. And what's important to know is the, the tips of the fiber that does the itching. Mm. So it all depends if the, the fiber bends away from the skin or the fiber pokes the skin and kind of bends away the skin, then you perceive it as being itchy. And that depends on the softness of the uh, fiber, and the softness of the fiber depends on the thickness of the fiber. Exactly, so for a thicker fiber, it's more difficult to bend it, and then it will poke the skin. Yeah, so we have a few different versions. This, this one is super fine. Yeah, this one is around 17 micron, it's super soft. Um, this one is around 40. It's hard to see on a picture, but it is a lot more coarser. Still, we can use the more coarse wool. Uh, base layers, of course, we use the really fine one. A bit thicker, but still around 25 or below, we can make a bit uh, like chunky sweater. Uh, and the even coarser one, we can, for example, can make this padding it's a non-woven padding that we can encapsulate in between two layers of fabric. So, for example, in this jacket, it's inside the jacket and there's no contact with the skin. Mm. So, it doesn't matter if it's itchy or not because it will never get in contact with your skin. I mean, they do if you don't take care of them properly. But if you wash them in the laundry program for wool on your washing machine, then you'll probably pre be pretty safe. One problem could be that we've seen is that some uh, washing machine manufacturers in their wool program have a quite high presetting on the last spin cycle. And it could be wise to, to check. And if it is very high, you could uh, select a bit lower spin cycle. Mm -hmm. Wool can handle both really hot water and a lot of mechanical mm -hmm. movement, but not together. Then we have this problem with the fibers tangling up and it gets felted mm -hmm. and shrinks. Mm -hmm. It all depends on how you take care of your garments. Mm -hmm. uh, so. I mean, don't wash it as often because it's not necessary. Air it out instead. Take it out, put it, put it on your balcony or if you have a garden and for a few hours and it will be fine again. Yeah. But it's also, I mean, how you wash it. To use the wool program on the washing machine, to use the correct detergent, uh, specifically for wool, because uh, it's all about the pH in the detergent and a higher pH destroys the wool fiber. I mean, it goes for everything. You should take care of your, of your things and, and in that way it wears longer. Yeah, definitely. And also wear, like, use the right garment for the right activity. Wool is perfect for all kinds of climate and also for warm climate. Um, it is thermoregulating, uh, so it's kind of cooling you when you're warm. Yeah, and also I'd say the, the kind of anti-odor effect, it's not a super good habitat for bacteria to grow. So in activities and seasons where you sweat a lot, I think wool is, is really good material. Of course, maybe you will not use a thicker or a heavy shirt, but a, a thin base layer like this one is perfect to use when it's warmer outside. 
You can use merino wool for all kinds of garments, not only base layers. It's all depending on the thickness of the fibers. And the merino breed is just like any breed. So you can, from that breed, you can find really fine uh, fibers up to maybe uh, 40 micron. And when making base layers for merino, it's really important that you have a really low micron. Around 18, 18.5 we normally use. And it's also important that it's uh, even quality. So all the, of course, it's a natural material, so every fiber cannot be exactly the same measurement. But it has to be within a certain like window mm. of thicknesses. If the um, material contains microns up to 40, you will feel the 40 microns. Definitely, even if the percentage is super small. Yeah. For example, this one. This is a really fine marina quality. It's around 21 micron, which is a bit coarser than you would use in a base layer. It's a nice one. It is. I mean, it all depends on how much the wool is processed. For instance, wool that goes into many different treatments, you know, you dye it and everything, you won't feel any smell when it's wet. And I have a few hand-knitted sweaters at home with really fatty, not so processed uh, wool. That one smells when it's uh, moist or wet. Mm. I wouldn't say it smells bad. It smells a bit like sheep, mm. which I think is nice. But of course, in a, like a mass-produced garment, you don't expect no. things like that to, to smell. But it's a natural part of the wool, which is a natural fiber. Mm. So that was a bit about misconceptions about wool. So if you have any other questions or wonderings about wool, uh, please post them below and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Thank you very much and see you out in nature. <laughs>